values are things that um, values are things that's important to you. Okay, values are things that's important to each individual, and it's different for for, for all of you. Okay, your beliefs are something that um, you believe is true, regardless if it has been scientifically proven or not. Okay, might be often religion. You believe in a specific religion, but some of it, you know what, not really documented. We had the chat earlier on this week, me and my son, about certain um, aspects um, of the Chris, uh, Christian um, religion. Um, um, and, and you know what? Um, and he, his question to me was actually, OK, so who wrote it? <laughs> well, that conversation can continue for, for the rest of the day and longer. Um, but the fact of the matter is, um, often we just believe in something because it, it feels right for us. And it, you don't need any, need any um, you, you don't really need any scientific proof that um, that is actually true. Okay, because we also know that it it, it it changes. What we believe often changes. Okay, it's not just uh, when we're not talking. Belief is not just about religion. Okay, so our values is what is important to us. It's it's also what um, is 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 morally acceptable um, as as. Um, um, the acceptable behavior in in a, in a particular society. Um, our belief is what's, um, what what obviously we think is true. Our attitudes is how the combination of what we believe and what our values are um, is actually put into action. How do you react um, um, to your beliefs and values? Okay, if you can in a nutshell just summarize what um, what you see on the screen in front of you. You're all good. You are so much in long weekend mode already. I <laughs> do, <laughs> but it's fine. I'm 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 okay with it. Don't worry. I think we all are. Um, right. Slides are self-explanatory, people. Um, this again is just um, embroidering on what I've said um, um, just now about your beliefs and your values. Um, we have to, as marketers, where we put our marketing cap now on, also realize that you know what, people's beliefs are going to change. It's not going to be the same, uh, and we need to prepare for that. And we cannot assume that because they did this based on what they believe about that product um, that it's going to continue like that because experience and exposure to alternatives and different cultures is always, oh no, I don't know this. This is actually quite cool. And you try something else. Why? Because one of the processes of learning is to experiment, to experience it yourself, to find out if it's actually true. You take a little child, doesn't, don't touch that hot plate. It's going to burn your fingers. What do we do? We tried anyway. Why? A, because we don't know if it does what mum or dad says. But um, guess what? It's not usually, in this particular case, a repeat action. Because then afterwards, we, oh, maybe I should listen to my mum and dad next time. Okay. And we all know that later on, um, the more you experience, the more information you gather, and it helps you in making, it helps you to behave in a certain way. It impacts on how you behave in a certain way. And also, as a consumer, how you then apply that in your process of deciding to buy a product or not. Right. Your personality, your self concept, your lifestyle, how we live tells a great deal. I mean, it's actually. Actually, the, the, the whole study of lifestyle and behavior is called psychographics. Um, it's it's um, it's more defined than just the demographics that deal with your age and your gender and where you live geographically. This, this your lifestyle, how you live, is actually going to, is actually telling you a great deal about how you will behave. Am I right? We do aspire to a certain lifestyle, but we also have a lifestyle that we currently are living and experiencing. Okay, it doesn't mean that. We not that that's going to be it forever, okay? Because it changes, it changes as we progress through our lives and we become more knowledgeable and we are 
um, we graduate and we um, are then employed and you earn an income, you become independent. And these things is natural progression. And that's what we all want. And as that change, your lifestyle will adapt accordingly. True or not? The lifestyle of a student is always great. I've never had a student who um, there's always money for a beer. Huh? I don't know why or where they get it, uh, but they do. And I know that my, my parents who were teachers, and um, you all know that teacher salaries are not fantastic. I never knew where they got the money for my football boots or where they got the money for that sports tour. But they made a plan. Okay, and they still, both of them actually have never been jailed, so it means that they didn't steal it somewhere, they just got it. I don't know, parents make plans, um, but students make plans as well. You make plans, your plans are different. You plan to uh, just have enough so you can have a beer. You'll be okay with that. Okay, but people, our lifestyles determine to a great deal. Um, what If you're a camper, if you're going camping every weekend, you're going to spend a lot of time in outdoor warehouse and at camp um, world and stuff like that because you want to catch up on the gadget when you even when you're googling and when you're visiting sites online because you're interested and that's your lifestyle the outdoor lifestyle is you will be interested in that more than anything else that's where you as as future marketers need to see the value of understanding that Certain cues like the lifestyles that customers lead is very much going to determine how they're going to behave when they make decisions to purchase or not. Okay. Otherwise, like we said in chapter one, you're sending the right message out, but you're sending it out to the wrong people. Then it's also over the top. Right. The opposite is true as well. You can send the wrong message out to the right people, and then you also wonder why people don't want to buy your product. Social factors, the culture, our reference groups, our opinion leaders, our families, our social class, for sure that impacts on how we, um, um, how we behave and, and, and explains a lot of how we behave as consumers. Your culture. Your culture is, I often refer to culture as the personality of a society. That, that sort of is a, a combination, all um, 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 of the sum of all your values and norms and, and attitudes and, and morals and, and, and customs all combined. They shape you. They often passed on from one generation to the other. But we learn through the process which is referred to as, um, as, as, as acculturation that you can learn from your own culture, which usually happens in a formal way as you're exposed to the culture that you've been born into. But then it's also through acculturation where you acquire information through exposure to other cultures. In South Africa, I think, I mean, if you have not been exposed to other cultures, I mean, hello, where have you been? It's so important that we understand that. And as future marketers, even more so for you um, to understand that. Because we cannot assume that everybody thinks the way that our culture, that you've been brought up. Um, and I can already see that um, in... in, in my children as the next generation, um, how the exposure um, as a result of us being um, um, a democracy since 1994 um, and, and, and the opportunities that allowed them to be exposed to different, um, to different ways of doing things in different cultures have improved. I can, from personal experience, when I was still coaching cricket um, um, with, with um, the first um, non-white play to play cricket for South Africa at the age of 41, Omar Henry in the 1992 Cricket World Cup. Um, I, I, I was exposed to his religion, the Muslim religion. And I tell you what, up to today, as a result of the, the, the certain customs and, and, and that, uh, of the Muslim religion that, that I was exposed to, um, staying in Stalamos next to his, um, I think it was his, his cousin, um, every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, I was still finishing my studies and I was also sort of part-time working already. 
every single um, um, Sunday morning, they were cook sisters. And so you know, I became so used to it, I miss it now. On the, and on, as I said, but it's because it's so it's so much part of of, of that particular of that particular culture, um, and 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 the sharing part, I really enjoyed about it. I mean, the fact that it's your family that's getting married, but um, it's actually you're one of this community, so everybody contributes because um, the same will be returned to you as well. It's it's amazing. Um, but again, you are not you are. Um, you're worst off if you've never had that opportunity um, and um, to be exposed to different ways of doing things. The British culture was a, the tough one for me to get um, um, used to when I when I worked in in the UK. That was yeah, um, that was interesting, very interesting, because they drink beer at room temperature, not cold. That was the first thing I couldn't understand. Why? And then I think later on I realized it's because it's almost my um, sub-degree temperatures most of the time there. <laughs> so room temperature in, the, in their case <laughs> is, is, is cool enough. Um, but again, it's it's those small things that's different in different um, in different environments and different cultures that um, that we're exposed to that um, that make us learn and more knowledgeable. Um, and that's what you want. You want your customers to be more knowledgeable. You want your consumers to tell you, no, no, this is nonsense. Um, I'd like that. I, I prefer that. I'd much rather prefer that than, than a customer that says, oh, yes, that was a bad experience. I'm not going back there. But he doesn't tell anybody. He doesn't throw his toys. He just never comes back. Because then, you, then you've then missed the opportunity of being told what, what, what was wrong, what you did wrong. I'd much rather have somebody complaining and say, listen, no, don't do it like this. And this was bad. And, don't, as long as you don't take it personally, <laughs> don't take it personally, and um, when, when, and um, and react to it personally, um, use it as an opportunity to to learn um, what you did wrong. Right. Um, subculture. Subculture specifically refer to those um, homogeneous groups within a particular culture, um, and and we've touched on some of them already. It could be um, it could be the the black market within um a um within the south african culture and and i've read a book um that i had to review on the weekend um something that we would like to offer the students at, at centurion which was on uh, um, at centurion at um at um at stadio in this field of study um, that was done by another university and what's going to be available as a as a as an online or as an ebook. Amazing um, um is amazing um reading. Um and I think it made a lot of things that often when examples are used in textbooks because it's not always necessarily um a South African writer or editors in um in the examples and, and especially, I mean, in, in this marketing book, they refer to it as firms. Firm is the word used for a business in 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 the U the, in the USA. Um, often, the term organization is also used, and that can be confusing because um, we are South Africans, and the terminology is different in in in, in our country. Uh, and I, what I enjoyed about this book that I wrote because I read it is is, is that it's very. It very much exposes you to the dynamics and the South Africa dynamics because that's quite interesting. Somebody said to me the other day, you know what? Maybe it's going to be a limiting factor because if it's all the examples are are are, um, are South African examples about spas or shops and shabins and that's not evident in other parts of the world, um, then you basically are preparing the students only to work in South Africa, which is not the case. I mean, you know what? Who would I hire if I want to open a branch in Africa? If I'm an international company, I'm going to hire a local person who understands the cultures here. Um, so it is beneficial because the generic components of this field of study will rem it is, 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 is universal. Do you think the four P's of marketing is different in America? No, it's also the, still the four P's. It's still product and price and promotion and place. Okay. So the generic concepts remain the same, and um, regardless of what your culture or origin um and religion is okay um reference groups 
Yes, question. Um, 88, 89, yeah, um, middle of 88 till about uh, middle of 89, uh, 90, yeah, two years from middle of 88. All over the place. At one stage, I had um, Boris Becker, the, the Wimbledon champion, um, live next door to me. I only realized that when it was Wimbledon, and all of a sudden, okay, right, he's the celebrity. I think I know this. Oak. Okay, right. And there's another one. Um, I think it's Pete Sampras. Hello, uh, okay. What are you guys doing here? Um, and then I realized that um, the area in which I stayed is an area that um, is quite popular for them to invest in and buy properties or rent properties while they are playing tournaments in in London, for instance. But yeah, now all over. I lived in Hounslow, which is an area very close to um, to, um, to Heathrow Airport. I think if you open the back door and the front door, the airplanes will actually go through that on the way to the to the to the to the airport to land. Um, it's amazing to watch the planes come in, and you can actually see with, um, because towards sunset in the evening it becomes darker. You can literally see five planes, the lights of five planes approaching. That's how regularly um, they landed. So yeah, all kinds of different. I was very fortunate um, to be exposed to different levels of the British society. All, all the social classes I've had exposure to. Um, you learn quickly on a construction site. Although that's not the, the main reason why you're there. And I ended up working at a club that now is a Virgin Active Club. Um, and um, there the membership already at that stage were 2,000 pounds a month. Okay, the exchange rate was 3.3 .3 at that stage, but um, but still, it was a rather exclusive. So I've had both ends of the of the social class structure exposed to. Your reference groups, people, um, could be anybody. There are so many. There are basically um, there are, there are basically eight, 16 different reference groups. Um, let's go to the next slide and let's look at. Um, um, the categories you you will find that you have um, your primary reference groups, which is usually a, a formal group or informal group, where a formal group refers to one with better structure, for instance, like you belonging to a to a sports club or a virgin active or a tennis club. They have certain rules and regulations on the dress codes and how things are done, and these AGMs and this this structure. And then you have informal primary groups, and that's um, less. Um, structured it's like your group of friends or your family for that matter you also have secondary groups the secondary groups refer to specifically um, 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 groups that you are in contact with on a daily basis you would be a secondary reference group because you see each other as classmates every day but you don't go home and live under the same roof you're only together when you yeah as, as, a, as a class and then you have um, um, groups that are um, groups that are not um, in contact with each other on a daily basis, like you've got friends um, uh, overseas that uh, basically, um, I have friends in Liverpool because I, I stayed there for a couple of months as well. Uh, I am a Liverpool supporter, as you know, so um, I'm in contact with my friends in the UK, in Liverpool, um, who I met many years ago. So we share the same, um, we share the same passion for the team that we support, but we live in two different countries. It's like you having a friend that you met on a sports tour when uh, in, in Nelspruit, for instance. Okay, uh, who hasn't got friends all over the world? I know we have friends all over the world. The internet has made the world so small. Okay, it makes us a bit wary as well as to who you communicate with. But um, I think I mean, as my son, as I said, is a semi-professional gamer, and he is he's online with people from all over. The other day, I walked in and he was like. Um, I said, well, it's three o'clock. Why are you still awake? Well, it was a week. It was a weekend anyway. So I mean, it's not. A, no, he's just uh, he's just waiting. I said, waiting on what? I mean, three o'clock at night. You either are doing something, um, or you're going to sleep because you're not waiting on something. He says, no, my friend in in um, my friend in Taiwan actually um, because of the time difference. Um, I'm waiting for him. We can go online again at four o'clock. And then you realize okay, the world has become so small. Um. But yes, uh, we have also groups that we um, 
aspire to belong to. You want to be one of the top five academic performers at Stadio in the course of um, digital marketing. Okay, there's a group that you aspire to, and then you also have groups that you want to just avoid. Okay, you don't want to be associated with that group at all. Okay, these are all different forms of reference groups, and you can see how wide it goes because it can impact on a lot of um, the decisions that we make. And it's all at some point we find ourselves. May, you can you you know, and the, the thing about this is that you're not limited to membership of one reference group. There's no membership fee to belong to a specific reference group. It's as you progress through life, maybe, and you currently might be, um, might be in. I'm 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 in a reference group for for a group of students. Okay, I'm in a reference group as as um, as as part of my family. Okay, I'm also a part of a different reference group, which is all our colleagues here together in the in the School of Commerce. So you, you are not just um, you are not just labelled and put into that reference group, but all these reference groups. And the more reference groups you are exposed to, uh, the more people you have to assist you in making buying decisions that you can use as references. Because usually, people in a reference group is somebody that you whose opinion you value, somebody you look up to, somebody that um, maybe is an expert or a person of authority. And as a result of that, you use them in, in, in consulting before making important decisions. Um, they all have different roles to play, and they all have different forms of influence on your behavior and your um, buying decisions. Everybody okay with that? You fine? You good? Okay. Um, I said to the students in, in, in Centurion and some of the students here who um, are dependent on, on lift clubs, because it's long weekend and just because we'll finish at 12. Okay. So those who are um, not aware of that fact, it's about 15 minutes for us um, to, to wrap up um, for this week. Um, you can inform people if you are in lift clubs that you will be done by 12. Okay. Unless you're one of those unfortunate ones who have the fifth period as well, which I don't think any of you are, fortunately. Okay. Right. So we have different reference groups and they all play different roles and, and, and influences on a different way. Then you have got your influences. We all know very much so currently in, in the times that we live in. There are influences often used by, by companies to, uh, um, in the past we were just calling it, I mean, it's influences are often um, celebrities and sports stars. Um, you probably sometimes know more about the sports star that you, um, that, 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 that you, um, so that you're a fan of than your own brother or sister. If I ask my son, um, what color is this and what such a person wears? I mean, one of his, 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 his football idols, then uh, you would tell me everything about that. You can, you can tell me anything about that person. Two size all the way up to where they were born, whatever. If I ask him something trivial about his brother, he was, mm, I'm not sure about that one. Okay, so I mean, we often, that often happens. Um, and um, yeah, um, influences are used very effectively by businesses nowadays. Um, often consumers. It's, it's not a scam, people. It's a clever way of, um, would you buy something that is endorsed by a particular um, uh, individual? If Kobe Bryant says, this is the best, or um, the late Kobe Bryant says, this is the best energy drink, people will believe that that's the best energy drink. Why? Kobe Bryant said he's the best. Okay, regardless if it is the best. But then also the supplier of that particular drink also make sure that they can back it that it actually is um, a, um, um, a product that is that is of quality that somebody like that would endorse. Okay, so we all buy things because sometimes we in, because our influences have influenced us. Okay, right. Family, yes, family, of course, especially. Up to where we are in where you are if we go to the next level which is your family life cycle where you find yourself pretty much as the as the unattached young adults am i right you probably find yourself there who's got a pet that they have to take care of 
Now, I'm not saying you, you it's, is it your pet? Yes. Or is it just a pet that you grew up with? Are you the one feeding it? Because that's the question. Hmm, that's a determining question. My son was said, well, that's my dog. I said, well, then you do what your dog does wrong. You're in, uh. Okay, so um, we all know that we in different uh, can and we progress through our lives. The next step, they say, is the newly married couples. I don't think so. Not too many of you look as if you're going to get married in the next five years or not, or want to get married in the next five years. Anybody got plans? Oh, you're too scared to share now. Hmm. Okay. Well, you understand what I'm saying. And then this is, uh, then you start with the family. I mean, do I want to buy a car every two years um, for the first 10 years of my marriage? No. I had to change. Because when my first son arrived, I couldn't have put him in the back of the Bantam Bucky. Okay? And there wasn't any extra seats on the front or space for him in the, in, in the cabin of the Bucky. So I had to get to a little sedan. That's actually, there is some room in the back for the, for the baby seat. And then three years later, you go on a holiday and you think, oh my word, why are all these parents having fun on the beach? Look at them, they're having fun. And we are tired as hell. We can't keep our eyes open because the youngster kept us up the whole night. And then you realize, you know what? It's because all of them have brothers and sisters. Okay. And that's why he has a brother. So now they can play with each other. So we can actually sit back and also have a holiday during holiday. Okay, it often happens like that. But now it also means I need a different car because it's now two, because the other one's going to school. And now we're talking about cricket equipment and stuff all in the back of the car as well. I was also coaching at some point, and my wife was coaching hockey. So we're looking at the hockey bag, uh, a cricket bag, and your kids. So it becomes an SUV. Now with all of them at the house, I'm like, oh, my goodness, maybe I want to get my son a car of his own one day. Um, and you sell your car to get a smaller car so you can afford another car. Okay, <laughs> It happens. We go through different life uh, phases of our life, people, and our needs are different in each of the cycles. And because our needs are different, we are going to be more involved in the decision. Um, and then we become conservative again when we become older. Okay, You're just not buying it because, I mean, and my phone's working. Yeah, okay, so it's an iPhone 7. Who cares? I don't need a new one. This one is still fine. Um, the battery life is good. I might think about it when I have to upgrade. I think I actually can upgrade. What would you recommend? Samsung. I was Android. I was Android for many years until I got this as a sort of my, my phone, um, the screen cracked, my Samsung screen cracked, and... Um, and I, I don't know, it's, it's still three months till upgrade, so I'm not going to pay anything extra. Somebody said, well, I've got an iPhone you can borrow. I thought, oh, geez, it took me about six months just to get the menu sorted. But now that I have the menu sorted, I'm not going to go back to Samsung. I'm going to stay. I'm, 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 I'm definitely with iPhones now. Okay, so things change. Even old people like us can change. Okay, with my... Parents had to change. My dad started emailing at the age of 77, and he was Skyping and, and Zooming at 78 for the first time in his life. And he had no choice because my sister was staying in, and still lives in Singapore. So, I mean, if he wants to chat to his daughter, then you know what? Modern technology. But he still walks to the shop to buy stuff. He doesn't order online. I said, Dad, geez, M, you're 85. At some point, yeah, but I mean, yeah, whatever. We go through different phases of our life, and as a result of that, we have different needs and different challenges and different behaviors. Hmm. I said to somebody yesterday, and I said, "Well, when do you really? Um, you don't, you don't, you look old, but you don't appear old." I said, "I'm not. I'm 25 in my head, but it takes you." That much longer in the morning after a spin class just to, yeah, shower, get dressed, and get ready. Okay, your recovery is so much slower. Um, and I think I said to him, you know what? I can distinctly remember when it happened in my life. I was 49 when I went to bed, and the next morning I woke up, and I was 50, and I couldn't move. Okay, and I'm not going to have my 50th birthday on, on the evening of my for the last 49. I was going to have that on my birthday. So the party was still that evening. It's just, what happened to my body? Huh? 
um, you, yeah. For some it happens at different times, but to me, I think it happens at 50. Um, so not as sharp physically as you when you were 25. I believe they said that for males, your physical peak, um, studied it recently, was 28, I think. Anyway, you've got good years ahead of you. The things that during these different life stages, uh, phases of, of your life cycle, um, change is obviously how much income, disposable income you have. When you are um, single and unattached, lots of money in your pocket. Why? You only have to take care of yourself and your dog or cat or pet, nothing else. Young and married, Similar, not more money, but definitely uh, still okay. Then the children arrive, and then you realize, okay, that's it, that's me, gone. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely. I was. I'm. I'm. I'm ready for retirement. I was ready for retirement five years ago. My bank manager have a different opinion, unfortunately. So um, that's why. No, I enjoy what I do. <laughs> um, do you? have more money at some stages in your life. The less people you have that's dependent on you, the more money you will have. And you will be able to spend um, differently. Okay. If you've got 10 bucks in your pocket and it's just you, hey, I'm going to try and see what I can get for this 10 bucks. Maybe it's... Huh? <laughs> Half a brandy. Half a tot of brandy. <laughs> If you uh, ever have three children, then the 10 bucks needs to go a long way, okay? And you will be the one going to bed um, um, hungry because that's priority. It's just the phases, people. Yes? If you want me to, I've got, <laughs> I've got um, unfortunately, it's not within my hands. Would I like to? Yes. Um, but as I said, yeah. I th yeah, I do. Second and third, yes, yes. That's why I'm tired. That's why I need a long weekend because um, we haven't had a break since February. Okay, you guys are in your third week and with the, with the second year's week, week 10 already. <laughs> yeah, so, yep. But it's actually good because now not everybody started at the same time. So it's not first, second and third year assignments and tests coming in. It's coming in in batches, so we now I'm attending to the second and third years. We've already done the um, assessment for term test, and you guys, fortunately, so now I'm done with these. When you, so it actually the workload is is, is even that uh, it, it works in that regard, but um, there's no break um, in between because they overlap. Um, but it's fine. I mean, no, I enjoy it. I would love to teach, um, and I think I'm a third generation teacher, and that was the last profession I was ever considering in my life. Um, consumer behavior, um, marketing again, services marketing, maybe entrepreneurship, I've done that as well. So it's very much along these lines. Um, and I think it makes sense, and um, they try and do that, um, that they that they have lecturers um, teach subjects that link, because we have a chapter now on consumer behavior, but you've got a semester module next year on consumer behavior. It makes sense that... Um, the same person is involved. But again, I mean, I don't know what the future holds, but um, I'm definitely um, I'm definitely committed for the long run. I This year is the first year and, um, that, that my first year, so that, that I've got a first year group that graduates. Okay, so when I started here three years ago, they were first years with me, and now they're graduating this year. So that's full circle on that group. But then, since then, there was another group that started. and. Yeah, I would love to do that. I said to the, um, some of my colleagues the other day, I'm one of those people that um, one morning I will be sitting here at the desk and after 10 minutes of not saying anything, one of you would come up to me and tap me on the shoulder and I will just be gone. Because that's how I see myself go. I'm definitely not one for retiring, sitting on a stoop, watching the grass grow and, um, and, 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 and the waves break. I mean, I'm, I'd much rather prefer to, to pass when I'm here doing what I enjoy. I thought at one stage it was going to be on the cricket field coaching, but then I realized, uh-uh. 
too much politics involved. Our cricket is in chaos. Let's rather not go that route. Oh, let's not discuss cricket. I just hope sensibility prevails. But yes, see, I cannot see where some people so stubborn, so stubborn. Is it 12 o'clock already? Are you sure? Just now? Oh my goodness, while I'm in class. It, 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 yeah, I can't be nice. You know, I won't do that to you. <laughs> uh, this just a question here from a student. Um, just a minute for those guys online. And hockey. Hmm. But um, it, it, that's why I had two knee ops now in January and February. Because I was a front foot player, so that's almost you. You're playing hockey in that position all the time, close as possible to the ground. Not good for your joints later life. But um, no, those are those are still my my two greatest passions when it comes to sports. Okay. Anybody um, online at home um, who are still with us, um, who have any questions? Dylan, do you have a question? Uh, no, I'm good, sir. Is everybody okay to call it a day? Yes, sir. Are you talking on behalf of the group or um, is everybody fine? May I get an indication if everybody's good? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to repeat myself. Don't come to class on Monday. Don't come to class on Tuesday. Enjoy your long weekend. Use the time effectively. Uh, stay safe, but enjoy yourself as well. Um, thanks very much for those people online. I'm going to stay online for another five minutes if there's any questions you want to ask. The students in class here, um, your guys are welcome to leave and enjoy the weekend. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, sir. Enjoy Anybody online that um, have anything that they want to maybe ask me about anything? I'll try my best. Thank you, guys. Oh, sorry, sir. Thank you very much. Keep well. Sir? Yes? The studio offers sports. The study of uh, study offers what? Sports. Um, not at the moment, but I know it's definitely part of the plan. Um, at, at the moment, um, students um, um, students wanting to do sports um, formally um, join the closest clubs. But uh, I know that when Stadio um, um, combined all the colleges that form part of them throughout um, throughout South Africa, that was part of the um, the medium um, to long term plan to ensure that um, all those kind of activities are also offered to the students in the same manner as it um, as, as, as um, um, you'll find at any of the other um, universities. But um, not formally at the moment, no, unfortunately. Oh, OK. Yeah, thank you, sir. OK, what, what supporter are you? Are you a Kaiser Chiefs or, or a Pirate supporter? I don't, I don't do soccer. You don't play soccer? <laughs> no, not anymore. What's your, what's your passion? Uh, hockey. All right. Um, any position, or are you just um? Um, when I first started, I was more on the defensive line, but right. uh, later on in the years, I got pushed up to uh, the middle and front lines. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's 
Actually, that's much nicer because there are a lot of sticks flying at the back at that, um, all different heights um, when you're in the fence. You almost sort of feel, okay, right, I'm, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's rather um, overwhelming, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I was on I was on the left um, on the left wing. That that was my um, that was my position. But uh, no, I quite in, I quite enjoy quite enjoy my hockey. I look forward to it. Um, I think it's um, it's just very sad that in our country, unfortunately, um, they are not getting the support that um, they are not getting the support that um, that they deserve.